And are you refreshed? Yes. Good. Now what? It's a little overwhelming. I've known for years this was going to happen, and now it's here, so it's pretty cool. So, for most of my life, I've been uh, struggling with depression, anxiety, body dysmorphia, and uh, since coming into re-remembering the truths of what you bring, I realized that my struggling with those things is because of the false beliefs. The struggle is really between me and me, isn't it? Correct. I go this way, my inner being goes this way. That is the struggle. Yes. Yeah. And it's very... Period. The only struggle. The only struggle. It's so real, but I also know that it's so false. It manifests in a real way. It's real. It's real. It's not necessary, but it's real. And the closer I come into alignment with my true, my true self... Or when I do. When I do. Correct. I can do it or not do it. I do it. I don't 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 do it. But when I do exactly. it. Exactly. But when and, I do it. And recently, the experiences are total opposites. So I've been working a lot with ayahuasca and having these profound downloads of the purest love. It's almost overwhelming. But then I keep getting back into this false mind pattern. So well, it's all right, because what you're talking about is just the momentum of thought and the habit of thought that meditation will free you from. Nothing else will. Right. <laughs> right. Something else might keep you from recognizing it in a moment, but let's say you're picking up on stuff. doesn't matter. But you manage to quiet your mind and your vibration rises, and then you have some conversation that changes the direction of some thoughts. And then you go back to your day, and it happens again and again. Well, eventually, your set point is in a different place. And it's funny, because I knew that you were going to say that. So what, what I wanted to ask yeah. is if you... But do you see how we work? Do you see how we get you to a place that there's no resistance about what we've just said, and then we can approach the subject where there is resistance. That's what meditation does for you. Takes you to a place of no resistance, and then you go back into the world and you reintroduce the resistance, but now you've reintroduced it at a different level. It really is the process of bridging thoughts. It really is the process of clarifying your vibration. Yes, because you can't do it by wrestling the problem to the ground and killing <laughs> right, it. Right, right. Um, so what I want to use this interaction for is to ask you, uh, I, I, let me pause for a second. I want to use this as a catalyst to, to move on and like to truly just be who I know I am, right? So what I want to ask is if you could give us... Do you know what the best catalyst to that is? A big old stubborn problem. Because you never know more clearly what you do want than when you're living what you don't want. In other words, sometimes if you're not clear about what you want, the path of least resistance is more problems about the same thing till you get clear. Yeah. So, so I just want to ask for you to give me and us words of... Because of, what I ultimately struggle with is, is the self-love. So I just want to have some words from you about self-love that I can use and just yeah. like... Yeah, here's the first thing. Stop using the word struggle. But struggle is how I feel, Abraham, so shouldn't I say how I feel? Well, be aware that you're feeling struggle and then just say to yourself something like, well, I can't really get out of struggle from struggle, so maybe I should call it struggly, something that's a little less strugglesome than struggle. Clarifying, sifting. I've been sifting through life. So ask your question again. We're not mocking you. We're wanting to find a way to get you to exactly where you want to be. So now say it again. So I just was hoping to get, get some p powerful words of self-love that I can use to just like really go after what it is that I want. Because I'm, I'm, I'm blocking myself, and I know that. So I want to like just... So we're looking for something that loosens the block? Like a rampage of self-love that I can just like... <laughs> <laughs> pretty good way of saying it because your inner being is yourself also but you mean a rampage of self-love from your total self that your blocked off self might hear mm -hmm. <laughs> your total self your inner being self is rampaging to you all the time and you don't hear it so you think the words will get through in a way that the constant love and appreciation and guidance isn't I'm hoping <laughs> so
I don't know if you're talking to me or Abraham, but I love you too. <laughs> Things are out of control. <laughs> We're reaching for your path of least resistance. And we want you all to hear that sometimes what you're asking for in the moment, you're not ready to let in. So what you get back is the letting in process rather than what you're asking for. So we're going to start in even a deeper place than what you've asked for. And then we'll get there. And maybe you'll meet us there. And maybe you won't. Maybe you'll meet us there. Maybe you won't. You could meet us there. But maybe you won't. You might meet us there. But maybe you won't. You could. But maybe you won't. It doesn't matter if you do or you don't. Because you can get there eventually. So this could be a good time, or maybe not, but it's probably a good time. It probably is. It feels like a good time, so you'll probably get there. You'll probably hear. Now, you see what we're doing? Yeah. We're just giving you the license to get there or not, to acknowledge that you have a desire that you might be ready for or not, because words are really cheap. A lot of people offer lip service. But we're not wanting to just give you words. We're wanting you to find resonance with who you really are. That's what you're reaching for. You're not asking for our words. You're asking for an inspiration to your resonance. Well, your resonance is about what you're doing. And so sometimes if people go too far, too fast, then it's just more words. So the universe doesn't work that way because the universe knows where you are and what's best for you to hear. So here... We'll give our best answer for what you are asking for. We're going to speak back and forth from your perspective and ours, and you'll know which we're doing. So we'll start first with you. I've been around for a while, and I have come to the realization that there is so much potential for me, potential for alignment, and therefore potential for all other things, because alignment leads to all other wonderful things. It's come to my attention that there's potential for my alignment that I'm not quite reaching my full potential. I've been practicing thoughts, I guess a lot of people do, I've been practicing thoughts that haven't really let me understand who I am, how I have purpose, how I have value. I can often love others. In fact, it's what my default setting is. I turn my attention to others often, and that gets me going, and that always feels good. But it's hard for me to let love into me. I don't know why. I've been blocking it for a long time. I don't really even understand why. Just a habit that got started. I didn't understand it. I developed patterns. Other people responded to those patterns. So I suspect that from very early age, people wanted to love me and I just wouldn't let it in because I felt unloved. Now, isn't that just a ridiculous, vicious circle that I got going for myself? I felt unloved, so I didn't let love in. And because I didn't let love in, I felt unloved. And I didn't feel loved, so I didn't let love in. And then because I didn't let love in, then I didn't feel loved. And then people couldn't love me because I wasn't letting love in. And I just developed a sort of pattern that nobody could really see because on the surface, I looked sort of normal and behaved sort of the way that I'd learned to behave, but I don't really understand why I wasn't really letting love in. But the one thing that has come from all of that is I've come to a keen awareness that I want to, that I want to let myself be loved. I thought I wanted to be understood. And as I've been listening to Abraham for a while, I realize that that's not really the quest because being understood is really an impossible thing because when you ask somebody to understand you, you need to immediately snap them into your same vibration. And that's an impossible thing. Everybody's got their own vibration going. So I think somewhere I got confused. The desire for love, I think I got it confused with the desire to be understood. And I also think that... I got confused about where the love was coming from. I think I thought the love would come from other people who didn't understand me instead of from source who always does. So there's two things I kind of got out of kilter. I got confused about being loved and being understood and I looked for people that couldn't really understand me to be the reason that I felt love. I realize now how screwy that whole thing was and why it didn't work. 
And I'm relieved that I'm not failing at something that should work because it couldn't work. So I'm sort of feeling some relief that I was looking for love in all the wrong places and getting mixed up about whether I was really wanting love from them or understanding from them, which really is not possible. So I also understand that when I'm in a sort of bad place and I want someone to love me or understand me, that they've got to go to the same bad place I am to understand me. Those two things don't go together. I want them to love me and understand me, but they can't understand me unless they get on my vibe. And if they're on my vibe, my not good feeling vibe, then they can't love me. No wonder it didn't work. <laughs> Looking for love in all the wrong places. Is this making any sense to any of you? Yes. Relating a little bit even? Yes. <laughs> so now I've kind of got that squared away. Now I realize that as lovely as people are and as much as I love so many of them and as much as I love being in this body and here in this world and on this leading edge, that I want to express love to them. But mostly I want to connect with love because if I don't let myself be loved, if I don't let this vessel that is me open to love, then I can't really love anybody else, not in a way that's meaningful to them. So a lot of us are just running around a little bit broken. We're not letting love in, but we're trying to let love out. So we're not going back to the well of replenishment. We're just loving and serving and trying to be of value and getting depleted and getting exhausted and getting overwhelmed because we're not letting it in. It's like never breathing air in and always breathing it out. You can't get too far with that. Pretty soon you got to start breathing it in or you have nothing to breathe out. And so now... I'm more clear about all of this. So I'm no longer wanting to look to others for that replenishment, although sometimes you can find it. Sometimes somebody's all tuned in, tapped in, turned on, and they got it going and blowing. And when they hold me as their object of attention, I can feel it. And I do like that, but I don't want to depend on somebody else's connection for that because they've got stuff they're doing too. And I don't need anybody else's connection. I've got my own straight line to it. I've got my own vortex. I've got my own valve that I can open wide to it. And often I do. Sometimes I do. Sometimes I do it more easily than not. It sort of depends on the momentum that got going. But more and more, I accept these things. I know that source exists. And I know that my inner being is a big part of that collective consciousness of source. And that my inner being is in an undivided way focused upon me. And knowing everything about me and loving me anyway. That my inner being is loving my becoming and is never holding me responsible for what I've come to. Because I'm eternal. I'm never going to get done. And there's always going to be within me a gap between what life has caused me to reach for and what I've allowed myself to catch up with. And I've been beating up on myself so long about that gap because I reach for more and then I don't go and then I feel bad about the gap. But my inner being never does that. And, oh, I'm just figuring this out. The very reason that I don't feel love or that I feel unloved is because my inner being is there and I haven't joined my inner being. In other words, the negative emotion that I feel that I've been calling people not loving me or my inner being not loving me or me not letting love in has only been because I have reached and have not caught up with what I've reached for. And so the very fact that I can feel negative emotion, which feels not love, is my proof that the love exists. Because if that love didn't exist and it wasn't pointed right at me, I couldn't feel this discord from not letting it in. Whew. So the very unlovedness I feel is proof of the love that is there. Ooh, I really like that. Me too. <laughs> I sensed that it was there. I had glimpses that it was there. It showed it to me from time to time when I was in the right place. I let it in from time to time, and I'm getting better and better at letting it in. I know that my inner being loves me, and I'm in the mood right now to hear some from my inner being. I'd like my inner being to explain to me a little bit what their perspective of me is. I'd like to know how my inner being sees me, and I'm in a better place now than I was at the beginning of this conversation. So I have a better chance of letting more of it in than I was at the beginning of this conversation. So I'll just listen for a minute, and I'll hear what my inner being has to say about me. <laughs> 